Let's see if it'll come back on. Okay, it's coming back on. Thank you guys for letting me know this. Was not aware that we had a collapse there. Matter of fact, really weird is it kept showing that I was still on the air. So my apologies that we had lost the feed. We did not lose the internet, my apologies. Um, but live stream had went down, but it should be coming back on. And I really want to thank uh, Heidi was up there watching, and so she was able to let me know. And I want to thank Melissa and some of you guys for letting me know over there in the chat room. So our apologies. We do not know what happened there. We did not lose the internet because the internet stayed connected to the phone line. And that's why there's 99 people listening on the phone line. Okay, again, let's just talk about that phone line. The phone line is, of course, 605-472-5791. Once again, that phone line is 605-472-5791. And you can always listen there. You'll need the access code. The access code is 322-656-POUND. That is 322-656-POUND. Pound, and so our apologies that we lost all of our connections except that phone line. I guess the NSA cannot, for some reason, figure that one out yet, and we thank God for that. So, those of you who are listening on the phone line, you can uh, you can know we're back online. We're back on YouTube is back live. So is new live stream. So is Periscope. So is Roku Satellite. So is our website. They're all back up and going. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how, where I lost my connection for me to go through it all. Uh, I went through the earthquakes and the fireballs and, and the asteroids and all of that. And uh, so I'm so, so sorry. We'll pick it up, though, with Yellowstone. And that is very simply this. Yellowstone is a ticking time bomb. And so is the volcano in Bali, in Indonesia, that they say, that's, of course, uh, Agong. 200,000 people have evacuated from there, and uh, they're very, very concerned about that. Uh, uh, Donna Brazil, that's what you want me to talk about? Okay, I'll get to her in just a second. I just mentioned her, and then we're going to talk about her. But Donna Brazil and, uh, is spilling the beans on Hillary. Matter of fact, if you give me a moment, I will pull that one up for you. We've got a lot of breaking news to cover. They have caught the Colorado shooter as well. So uh, give me just a second here and we'll get this information. Donna Brazil coming out and uh, exposing the uh, Clinton situation. Let me get to that right now, okay? Um. Donna Brazil, who we know, guys, during the second debate, during the election process, gave Hillary Clinton all of the questions that CNN was going to ask in the second debate, and she still lost the debate to Trump, knowing what the questions were. That shows you she doesn't know the heart of the American people. Trump know, knew the heart of the people. He knows what the people want. He knows what the people are frustrated about. He, he knows we're tired of the corruption in Washington. Hillary is a part of the corruption in Washington. She don't care what you want. She cares about selling her message of the new world order, of global elitism, the globalist, the Illuminati message. So even when you know what the questions are, her answers are still tailored to push the new world order agenda. All right. Well, here's what it says about Donna Brazil. Uh, this is by Politico. Before I called Bernie Sanders, I lit a candle in my living room, said Donna Brazil, and I put on some gospel music. I wanted to center myself for what I knew would be an emotional phone call. I had promised Bernie that when I took the helm of the Democratic National Committee, after the convention, that I would get to the bottom of whether Hillary Clinton's team 
had rigged the nomination process as a cache of emails stolen by Russian hackers and posted online and had suggested. I had had my suspicions from the moment I walked in the door of the Democratic National Convention a month or so earlier based on leaked emails. But who knew if some of them might have been forged? I needed to have some solid proof, and so did Bernie. This is, this is, a, this is a report coming from Robin. Let me, see, let me make sure I got the right person that's writing the report. It's political, okay? And this is Donna Brazil. So I followed the money. My predecessor, Florida Republican, excuse me, this is Tom Perez speaking. So I followed the money. My predecessor, Florida Rep Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz, had not been the most active chair in fundraising at a time when President Barack Obama's negative uh, had left the party in significant debt. And as Hillary's campaign gained momentum, she resolved the party's debt and put it on a starvation diet. It had become dependent on her campaign for survival, for which she expected to wield control of its operations. Debbie Wasserman Schultz was not a good manager. She hadn't been very interested in controlling the party. She let Clinton's headquarters in Brooklyn do as it desired, so she didn't have to inform the party officers how bad the situation was. How much control Brooklyn had and for how long was still something I had been trying to uncover for the last few weeks. And by September 7th, the day I called Bernie, I had found my proof and it had broken my heart. The Saturday morning after the convention in July, I called Gary Gensler, the chief financial officer of Hillary's campaign, he wasted no words. He told me that the Democratic Party was broke, busted, and disgusted, and $2 million in debt. What? I screamed. I'm an officer of the party, and they've been telling us everything is fine, and they were raising money with no problems. That wasn't true, he said. Officials from Hillary's campaign had taken a look at the DNC books. Obama had left the party $24 million in debt, $15 million in the bank debt, and more than $8 million still owed to vendors who hadn't been paid from the 2012 campaign and had been paying them off very slowly. So Obama's campaign was not scheduled to pay it off until 2016. Hillary for America's Hillary for America, the campaign, and Hillary Victory Fund, its joint fundraising vehicle with the DNC, had taken care of 80% of the remaining debt in 2016, about $10 million, and had placed the party on an allowance. If I didn't know about this, I assumed that none of the other officers knew about it either. That was just Debbie Wasserman Schultz's way. In my experience, she didn't come to the office to the officers of the DNC for advice and counsel. She seemed to make decisions on her own and let us know at the last minute that she had decided. She had done what she was told about the hacking only minutes before the Washington Post broke the news. So it go, this conversation goes on and on and on, okay? On how broke the Democrat Party was. Obama left him $24 million in debt. Uh, Hillary has to pick it up. They're not raising a lot of money. Hillary's got to get the money from big donors. The American people, the little people, were not sending money to Hillary. They were sending it to Bernie. Bernie was raising multiple millions from the people. He didn't have the big donors because he didn't have their agenda. He had the agenda of the people. Much like Trump, he was getting the money from the people. And later, he got them from the uh, more wealthier Republican donors after he got the nomination. Not before, because all the big money men were in for Jeb Bush and had already given the money to Jeb, okay? So that's kind of how, first of all, you need to know the the uh, ins and outs and what a mess. And, and they rigged it against Bernie. Bernie had no chance. Donna Brazil gave Hillary the questions and then she knew that the DNC was completely against him. They were not running a fair campaign. They were, they were all in for Hillary. 
Hillary was funding the Democratic National Party, and so they were going to make sure she got the nomination. That's why all of those congressmen and senators, all the, what's called super delegates, that is why they all voted for Hillary and not Bernie, is because the whole Democrat Party was in debt and couldn't bail it out, and they needed Hillary to raise the money to help pay for their Senate campaigns, congressional campaigns. They weren't going to be able to get reelected. They needed Hillary's money to help keep them afloat. Thus, they all put in their super votes for Hillary. And even though Bernie had the numbers, even though Bernie had the crowds, even though Bernie had really the message of the Democrat Party, not a message that I like. He was a super socialist. I wouldn't vote for him in a million years. But I'm just telling you, this is how the Democrats had this thing rigged from the beginning. And they were going to continue. Hillary was supposed to win. Or Jeb Bush was supposed to win. They were the Manchurian candidates, folks. It didn't really matter which one won. Hillary was going to lean left. Jeb was going to lean right. But they both were going to continue to march on with the new world order. Jeb Bush's daddy is the one that broke the news to us on September the 11th, 1991. And then it was Jeb, and then it was George W. Bush who was president, was president when September 11th, 2001 to the day, 10 years to the exact day we had the 9-11 event which we know there had to be inside cooperation. It wasn't just the 19 hijackers from Egypt. We know that Osama bin Laden's family flew out of there the next day, the only plane that flew in America that day. And we know there had to be insiders involved in the government helping pull this off because we've seen buildings exploding and collapsing that had no business falling down. There was no reason that seven buildings were to fall down. So obviously there was an inside Illuminati working with radical Islam. We watched it play out in front of our television screens, but it wasn't just the Bushes involved in the Illuminati. We have to go back to Brzezinski. We got to go back to David Rockefeller. We got to go back further than that. And we know that as we watch Henry Kissinger and others push the new world order, along came the superstar Barack Obama and of course the corrupt Clintons and the cartel that was absolutely involved in destroying America because you have to destroy America for the beast to rise. Donna Brazil found herself a political analyst for CNN. And she was the one that hand delivered the questions for the second debate to Hillary Clinton so that Hillary knew exactly what was going to be asked. And they were going to softball the questions to where Hillary could knock it out of the park and continue to push the new world order agenda. President Bush, or that at that time, candidate Trump, excuse me, candidate Trump, had no idea what the questions were, yet with his savvy ability on his feet to be attacked with every question and have to defend himself while she's been giving an entree on a platter, at the end of the debate, the public ruled all the opinion polls, even the Democrats admitted Trump won the debate without knowing what it was. Why? How did that happen? Because God had a plan. God had a plan that he would still see to it that this man, without knowing what was going to be said, what questions were coming, could still give the correct answers because he was speaking really from the heart of the people. He was speaking what he knew the people were, were feeling. They feel the corruption of Washington. They know the swamp is sleazy. They're paying high taxes. Their health care is imploding. Their jobs are leaving the country. They, they, they knew all these things. It's not, a, you didn't need to be Stephen Hawking or a, some kind of rocket scientist to figure out what was wrong in America. It was the Lord's script. That's a great answer. It was not, it, 
Trump probably couldn't do it again. But he did know enough about the heart of America and was willing to listen. And God knew what to place in the spirit. Of course, it doesn't hurt to have 40 pastors anoint you with oil and pray for you the night before the debate. It doesn't hurt to have prayer warriors and intercessors and churches and God-fearing people across America praying for you day and night. You may not know what to say, but if you are being led by the Spirit of God, you will say some things correctly. Now, you can still not always say it correctly. You can still throw some of your own flesh in there. Haven't we all done that sometime or another? But at the end of the day, if we still would go back to the Lord and keep asking for forgiveness and help and please show me the way, he will continue to guide your path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he'll direct your path. So once again, God continues to bless America. Donna Brazil knows it and she's now coming clean. And we're going to continue to research the rest of her remarks about just how crooked Hillary is and just how crooked the whole process was. And when you hear these people tell you that the Russians were meddling in your election, please, please, please listen to me. The Russians was the least of your problems. Who's meddling in your election has always been the new world order, the Illuminati with their Manchurian candidates. They have been not only meddling in your election, they have bought and paid for your elections for since Ronald Reagan was in the White House. And we haven't had a president fight against the, the Illuminati or call them out since JFK took a bullet in the head in Dallas. Folks, America was on its way to hell in a handbasket. And the Bible says when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. And I can tell you, the tax plan that's on the table today will drastically put money in people's pockets. If the corporate rate for the middle class is cut from small businesses from 39 to 20, that is insane. That will fuel a revival and a, and an, I mean, seriously, an economic boom, which in turn will put people to work, which will in turn will put food on people's plates across middle America, and, a, and to all of America, opportunity will come. And it's all because you take and give the people back their, their funds. I think you and I have a better job managing our money than the federal government does. Can somebody give me an amen on that one? And so that's where we're at right now, folks. Also, Trump knows we got to stop the flow of migrants into our country that are overwhelmingly flooding us. He sees what's happening to the, to the European nations, why they're collapsing. And he knows that this diversity visa program is just another prime example of the corruptness of the Obamas and the Clintons and the, the cabal that's been trying to destroy this country. You gotta stop the bleeding. You can't just let this guy, can't we, 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 we pulled him out of a lottery. And do you believe that? Who's pulling the, who's picking the lottery? Who's making the decision? Who gets in? How many times are they picking the radical Islamic Muslim militant jihadis on purpose for diversity? And the guy gets here and then brings 23 of his own recruits here. And then they all go pray at the same mosque. And next thing you know, they're running people down with cars or shooting them in the head or blowing up a building. Or, or chopping them with hatchets or slitting their throats and hollering Allah Akbar or mowing them down with guns. <sighs> uh, sorry that we lost connection there for a little while. Matter of fact, I didn't know it was that long. I didn't even know it had happened because, uh, but we did. But we have got it all back now. I understand. I'm going to double check and make sure. Are, are, is everything working good now, Robo Mom? I'm at the YouTube. Uh, Miss ZD, give me an amen. Miss ZD, is everything now working? I'm talking new live stream, Roku, Periscope. You know, is everybody, is everything a go? 
Melissa said it was about 10 minutes that we lost that. It's all great now. Thank you, Roll Mom. You know, it's amazing because I never got notified here. I mean, what I mean by that is the computer itself, I didn't lose internet because I kept the, 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 the only thing that stayed on was the new radio line. And uh, we're still got 77 people there right now enjoying the new radio line. So we thank God for that. Again, let's just remember what that new radio line is. Because apparently, if we get disconnected, the new radio line is still out there working. And uh, that line is this, 605-472-5791. That's 605. I can't see. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Brock? Hang on a second. Brock, are you going to take over the controls? or? Yeah. Okay. 605-472-5791. That's 605-472-5791. And the access code is 322-656-POUND. That's 322-656-POUND. So Brock Begley has just uh, stepped in. And we're glad he is. Uh, he wasn't here earlier, so I, had, I started the show uh, on my own using the controls here, which is not as, maybe it was me. I could have actually hit the wrong button somewhere and disconnected. Brock, so you'll know, you can hear me now. Uh, I lost everything for 10 minutes except the new radio line. So I didn't lose the internet. For some reason, I lost my connection. And when I lost my connection, I lost, you know, a uh, new live stream, Roku, Paul Begley Prophecy, YouTube, Periscope. I lost all of them, but I reconnected it. But now you've, you've got control now, right? I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so Brock's back in control. Okay, great. But anyway, thank God for the new radio line. And there is 80 people there now, and so we're glad you guys are there. Um, so let's talk about the shooting real fast in Denver. Last night, we did, uh, we did a video on this last night. We talked about it live during our broadcast He's been captured. They have captured the Walmart shooter in Colorado from last night. A guy by the name of Scott Olstrom. He's 47 years old. I did a video on it this morning. Let me read to you. He walked into Walmart just nonchalant, wearing a pair of jeans, a black leather coat, just looked like a normal guy just walking in, no weirdness, no expressions of anger, just by himself, just walked in and opened fire on people, killing three. According to Reuters, police in Colorado say they have captured him. They said that they, they said calmly he walked into the suburban Denver, Colorado Walmart and fatally shot three people to death before just walking out and driving away. He never ran or nothing. The Thornton Police Department said on Twitter that Scott Orstrom age 47, who authorities said randomly opened fire uh, last night, had been taken into custody but did not immediately give details. Authorities had earlier released a surveillance camera photograph of this middle-aged white man wearing uh, this black jacket and blue jeans. They also published a photo of the red four-door hatchback he was believed to have fled in. Uh, Ornstrom nonchalantly, Brock, I don't know if you can find that, nonchalantly uh, entered the store in Thornton, Colorado, about 10 miles northeast of downtown Denver, and opened fire on the shoppers and the employees shortly after 6 p.m. local time there. Thornton Police Department spokesman Victor Olivia, Olivia told reporters citing witnesses' accounts. Two men were killed in the store, uh, and another woman was taken to the hospital where she later died, according to police. What we have determined is that there, this is a total random act of violence for no reason. There was no connections that we know of from the man and the, the, the deceased. And uh, the Walmart had been quickly surrounded as the shooting began after the gunfire by police and fire crews. They initially reported there was multiple parties had been injured and there was no indication that the shooting was an act of terrorism and no one has claimed responsibility. We can't rule anything out. But Walmart customer Aaron Stevens, who's 44 years old of Thornton, Colorado, told Reuters he was buying groceries 
at a self-checkout stand when he heard gunshots and ricocheting bullets. And um, the employees started screaming. And the customers started screaming as people began to flee the store. I ran out too because I didn't want to get shot. NBC television affiliate Channel 9 News reported that a woman whose son was in the Walmart said he heard about 30 gunshots. Earlier accounts of multiple casualties had received painful memories of the Denver area where a gunman had killed 12 people back in 2012 at midnight screening of Batman. There he is. That's the gunman, Scott Ornston, uh, age 47. Why did he nonchalantly walk into a Walmart and open fire on people in the store? What is he one of these program shooters that Russ Dizdar talks about? Remember James Holmes, who did that in the uh, uh, movie theater in Aurora, Cal uh, Colorado, back in uh, 2012. Remember Jared, the shooter down there in Arizona. Uh, don't forget that guy really wild out of his eyes also, that dude out of, uh, in, in Connecticut at the Sandy Hook shooting. And don't forget about now Scott Paddock. Was he really the shooter or not? Now, Bart Begley at the Crusader Journal is working on an, ex uh, an unbelievable information on the Las Vegas shooting. He has been, he has uncovered an enormous amount of information. There you see the Walmart chaos going on there. But uh, Bart will be bringing out some uh, very powerful information about this on the Crusader Journal. Bart is actually uh, taking the Crusader Journal. In the next couple of days, you will notice a, 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 a change in the formatting and the type of stories he's going to bring forward. Uh, he has been trying to bring forth the current events uh, out there in, uh, out in the world, in the news, but he has noticed there's so much of it skewed to fit the new world order agenda that it's so difficult to find articles written that are not so left leaning bias. So what he's going to do is sift through it, try to find the better stuff that makes sense, that keeps you informed. May not all be exactly his view, but he, some of it, but he's going to be writing a lot more articles himself to give a more biblically based view of the current events. And so you'll notice that as he goes through a change in the presentation over at the Crusader Journal. And he and I had a, uh, uh, a conference about that this morning. And he's been telling me about this for the last week that he's getting ready to make that transformation. So I think you're gonna enjoy, um, enjoy that, okay, as he brings this stuff forward. Um, and we'll continue to keep a close eye on it. We may have some of that today, I'm hoping, that we get some of that information today before it's all said and done. Uh, certainly, we're living in a time that I never thought I would ever see, but the media is so tainted, it is so distorted, it is such, it is so skewed to, fix, to fit the globalist agenda that it is unbelievable what we've been viewing. Folks, we're at the top of the hour. I think Bart may have that. Now I'm gonna see if he has got this breaking. I'm gonna just second and then I'll come back after the break I want to see if he has been able to get to that he does have the Colorado thing uh, research but he's working on an exclusive for Las Vegas for you so I, I don't hang on one second yeah that there's the uh, Colorado give me one second here uh, yeah he does have the uh, Colorado thing, but he's working on it. Yeah, he's wrote an article. Let's just see what he did, and then we'll take the break. If you want to go there, Brock, you can over to... Um, give me a second here. All right. This is the Crusader Journal, and he's just getting started on this transformation that he'll be doing there because he said it just so left-wing leaning. Now, he will allow left-wing articles from people on the site because you got to be able to get information out on everything and he can't write an article on everything. But he also thinks there's got to be some better reporting. Uh, his article, Suspect Arrested. When we come back from the break, we will read this article by Bart Begley and we will also tell you about Stephen Hawkins and how robots are going to take over the world, according to Stephen Hawkins. And then there's Snoop Dogg 
and a whole lot more. I'll be back, guys. Give me about four minutes. We'll be, uh, one second. We'll be right back. If I can hit the right buttons here. I'm really sorry. I need a couple seconds here to fix this. And we'll be right back uh, with hour number two in uh, just a moment. Um, <laughs> it's funny how that goes. Uh, um, I'll be right back with hour number two in just a moment. I have a brand new DVD entitled The Total Eclipse of the Sun. I mean, we have these great solar eclipses, the constellations in the heavens of Revelation 12, and many other signs that God gives in the last days. I have this DVD available at my website only. It's a powerful presentation of the coming of Jesus Christ and everything you need to know about His return. Get it now at my website. A brand new D. Let's see if it'll come back on. Okay, it's coming back on. Thank you guys for letting me know this. Was not aware that we had a collapse there. Matter of fact, really weird is it kept showing that I was still on the air. So my apologies that we had lost the feed. We did not lose the internet. My apologies. Um, but live stream had went down, but it should be coming back on. And I really want to thank, uh, Heidi was up there watching. And so she was able to let me know. And I want to thank Melissa and some of you guys for letting me know over there in the chat room. So our apologies. We do not know what happened there. We did not lose the internet because the internet stayed connected to the phone line. And that's why there's 99 people listening on the phone line. Okay. Again, let's just talk about that phone line. The phone line is, of course, 605-472-5791. Once again, that phone line is 605-472-5791. And you can always listen there. You'll need the access code. The access code is 322-656-POUND. That is 322-656-POUND. Pound, And so our apologies that we lost all of our connections except that phone line. I guess the NSA cannot, for some reason, figure that one out yet. And we thank God for that. So those of you who are listening on the phone line, you can, uh, you can know we're back online. We're back on YouTube is back live. So is new live stream. So is Periscope. So is Roku Satellite. So is our website. They're all back up and going. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know how, where I lost my connection for me to go through it all. Uh, I went through the earthquakes and the fireballs and, and the asteroids and all of that. And uh, so I'm so, so sorry. We'll pick it up, though, with Yellowstone. And that is very simply this. Yellowstone is a ticking time bomb. And so is the volcano in Bali in Indonesia that they say that's, of course, uh, Agong. 200,000 people have evacuated from there, and uh, they're very, very concerned about that. Uh, uh, Donna Brazil, that's what you want me to talk about? Okay, I'll get to her in just a second. I just mentioned her, and then we're going to talk about her. But Donna Brazil and, uh, is spilling the beans on Hillary. Matter of fact, if you give me a moment, I will pull that one up for you. We've got a lot of breaking news to cover. They have caught the Colorado shooter as well. So uh, give me just a second here, and we'll get this information. Donna Brazil coming out and uh, exposing the uh, Clinton situation. Let me get to that right now, okay? Um. Donna Brazil, who we know, guys, during the second debate, during the election process, gave Hillary Clinton all of the questions that CNN was going to ask in the second debate, and she still lost the debate to Trump, knowing what the questions were. That shows you she doesn't know 
the heart of the American people. Trump know, knew the heart of the people. He knows what the people want. He knows what the people are frustrated about. He's, he knows we're tired of the corruption in Washington. Hillary is a part of the corruption in Washington. She don't care what you want. She cares about selling her message of the new world order, of global elitism, the globalist, the Illuminati message. So even when you know what the questions are, her answers are still tailored to push the new world order agenda. All right. Well, here's what it says about Donna Brazil. Uh, this is by Politico. Before I called Bernie Sanders, I lit a candle in my living room, said Donna Brazil, and I put on some gospel music. I wanted to center myself for what I knew would be an emotional phone call. I had promised Bernie that when I took the helm of the Democratic National Committee after the convention that I would get to the bottom of whether Hillary Clinton's team had rigged the nomination process as a cachet of emails stolen by Russian of Donald Trump on the cover. Plus, I got a whole lot more <coughs> as it relates to the end time events. But if you go with me to the Crusader Journal for a moment, We'll take a peek at this article written by Bart Begley uh, today. The suspect arrested in the connection to the shooting, the three dead at the Colorado Walmart. Now, the suspect wanted for the deadly shooting that took place at Walmart, Colorado yesterday has now been arrested after an all-night manhunt, according to law enforcement officials. ABC News reported uh, today that the suspect was identified as the 47 year old Scott Olstrom. He was apprehended by law enforcement officials taken into custody this morning, according to the Thornton police department. While the suspect was on the run, police officials had said he was considered armed and dangerous in what is being described as a random shooting. Two men and one woman have been killed last night at the Walmart there in Thornton, Colorado, a suburb of Denver. The suspect was reported to have nonchalantly walked into the front door of the Walmart wearing a black jacket and a maroon shirt and jeans before opening fire with a handgun, randomly targeting individuals in the front of the store near the cash registers. Uh, Ornstrom then exited the store before fleeing in a red Mishibishi Mirage. What? Uh, we believe as of right now that the shooting was random, according to Thornton police officer Victor Elavea, and he told that also to CNN. Law enforcement officials say they cannot rule out terrorism, but at the moment there are no indications that the incident is terror-related. And police officials have also said they do not know of the motive for the shooting. All right. Now, Bart also has... Uh, a, a tweet, if you go down, he's got from the Thornton Police Department update, Walmart homicide suspect Scott Onstrom has been taken into custody. All right, so uh, there you go. Bart Begley in the uh, newsroom in there, actually in the studio with Brock. Brock, you can give us a picture from over there. It'd be great. Uh, and uh, they're in there working, keeping it going for us over at uh, here at the Salvation Station. And uh, we're just so glad for uh, keeping us up to speed on these things going on. There's obviously things happening around the world that's affecting uh, people. There's Brock and there's Bart behind him. All right. Good job, Brock, on the uh, controls. Good job, Bart, on the article. They'll keep us up to speed on the things going on at the Salvation Station. And I can tell you that as we look forward into the things that are happening, it's going to get crazy. Are we ready for Stephen Hawking? Uh, let's see if we can find out the information on Stephen Hawking. Uh, he, he says Stephen Hawking's terrifying warning about AI robots. What? Uh, okay, here we go. Here we go. Stephen Hawking. Well, he is concerned that artificial intelligence is quite likely to replace humans altogether. Stephen Hawking has warned human development of robots and computers will eventually reach a tipping point when it will become a new form of life that will outperform humans. According to the Cambridge physicist, 
If people design computer viruses, someone will design an AI that improves and replicates itself. The professor, who is now 75 years old, has previously said he does not see a fundamental difference between a, what a human brain and a computer can achieve. So it follows that at the same point, the machines can become better than us. If it's not machines crushing us, in their drive for efficiency, it will probably be our own incompetence at managing planet Earth, he said in the same interview with Weird, no, excuse me, Wired magazine. That could be a difference there. Uh, also, he said, I believe we have reached the point of no return. Our Earth is becoming too small for us. Global populations increasing at an alarming rate and we are in danger of self-destructing. We urgently need more young people to get interested in researching space, he said, so we can colonize other planets and save our species. It's not the first time Stephen Hawking has sounded the doomsday bell. Um, uh, oh no, I definitely need some coffee if we've got some, all right. It's not the first time that Stephen Hawking has sounded the doomsday bell about artificial intelligence. Because back in 2015, he said that robots we designed could crush humanity like an anthill. What? Well, the real risk of AI isn't malice, but competence. He said a super intelligent AI will extremely good at accomplishing its goals. And if those goals aren't aligned with our goals, well, we're in trouble, he says. And he also said that we should prepare to leave Earth in a 100 years. Well, I got news for you. I plan on leaving even before that. What? All right. I mean, I got a ticket for an airplane. No, no, it's not an airplane. It's a plain airline. Okay. It's uh, I, that's what I'm talking about. I don't plan on sticking around the planet. Jesus is coming back for the bride. He's coming back on a clouds of glory for this same Jesus that you see going away is coming again in like manner. Are you serious? Are you serious? I'm not waiting a hundred years. Oh, that is so good. Time out. Everybody, everybody gets, calm down, everybody. The AIs can't make coffee this good. No, no. And some of you are drinking get the tea.com. That's okay. But this coffee's good. That's incredible. That is really incredible. Wow. Perfect timing on that. Seriously. Um, he said that we should prepare to leave earth in a hundred years. And that world, that a world government could be our only hope. No, 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 Stephen Hawking. You've lost your mind. And I say that with all due respect, but come on, dude. No, we don't want a one world government. That's not our only hope. But unfortunately, though politics is also a grave threat to humanity right now, he believes. Well, duh, you think? And Donald Trump's decision, he said, to pull out of Paris climate Accord could push earth over the brink. Have you, are you, I mean, are you, can you, what are you? No, <laughs> what? Donald Trump pulling out of a worthless agreement called the Paris Climate Accords is not going to push humanity over the brink, dude. Seriously, what are you doing, Stephen? What are you talking about? As it has a, the Illuminati is playing with your brain, brother. I mean, listen to this, folks. I mean, I don't know what Stephen Hawking's thinking here, but um, the Illuminati wants a one world government. Stephen Hawking wants a one world government. Elon Musk wants a colony on Mars. Stephen Hawking wants a colony on Mars. Stephen Hawking's blaming mankind for climate change. The whole Democratic Party is blaming humanity for climate change. Stephen! Anyway, speaking on his 75th birthday, he said, we are close to the tipping point where global warming becomes irreversible. Trump's actions could push the earth over the brink to become like Venus. Did he actually say that? Guys, are you serious? One man, one man, one president with one agenda, canceling one worthless contract with the Paris Accords is not going to turn this country, is not going to turn this whole planet into Venus. 
I mean, come on, dude, you've got way more intelligence than that, way more understanding. You know the earth will never become Venus. Look where we're positioned with the sun. He even said that the earth is over the, he said, Trump, <laughs> you talk about fear mongering. You can, I don't ever, I'm saying this now to the mass media, to all of you who write articles about me and all of you guys calling us fear mongers and all the haters and the trolls and everybody else out there. Don't ever call me a fear monger. When Stephen Hawking says these words, that Donald Trump's actions on canceling the Paris Climate Accord could push the earth over the brink to become like Venus with temperatures of 250 degrees Celsius and a raining sulfuric acid. This dude is, is I'm not going to say he's snorting acid, but he's got acid on the brain. He's thinking about acid anyway, sulfuric acid, even if it's that. I mean, what is he thinking? Dude, dude, what are you thinking? What are you saying? Can you imagine if Paul Begley said that? About Barack Obama or Hillary Rodham Clinton's agenda would push us over the brink and cause Earth to turn into Venus with temperatures of 250 degrees Celsius? Does anybody know what temperature that is in Fahrenheit? Because I really don't care what it is in Celsius. What is 250 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? What did this man just say? What did he just say? Somebody Google it. Somebody add it up. I need an answer. That's insane. I'm not done yet with the article. Brock is awesome. Yes, yeah, so is Bart. So is the, my, and you guys even met, you guys even met my youngest son either. So I got three of them. Three awesome sons better than I am. That's the goal, right? Oh, good. Uh, one can write better. One can spell better. One can think better. One can, is better with electronics and computers, technology. I mean, they're all three better at all, all of the above. That's really cool. 482 degrees. 482 degrees. Thank you, virtuous woman. Thank you. 400. Did Stephen Hawking just say that Donald Trump is just about ready to push the earth over the brink and will become 482 degrees Fahrenheit? Stephen. Stephen, are you okay? Stephen, you know better than this. Hmm. I respect Stephen Hawking. He has come up with a lot of great information in the past, but he's clearly following the New World Order agenda. But let's finish the article. But wait, there's more because I'm going to be telling you in a moment about Snoop Dogg, and then I will lose my mind at that point. All right. Anyway, the forces that contribute to Brexit. Now he's going to blame Brexit. The forces that contributed to Brexit. The envy, the isolationism, not just in the UK, but around the world, he said. The spring, that spring from not sharing of cultures driven by a narrow definition of wealth and a failure to divide it more fairly, both within nations and across national borders will strengthen, he said. If there if that were to happen, I would not be optimistic about the long-term outlook for our species. Stephen Hawking, are you serious? Stephen Hawking, are you serious? All right, well, but wait, there's more, guys. There's a whole lot more. There is a whole lot more here. Um... I'm, 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 I don't even know if I want to talk about Kevin Spacey right now and, and Bill Clinton and, and Jeff, Jeffrey Epstein and the plane rides to the island. I, I don't even think I want to go there right now. I, I just don't think I could. I would, that would be it. I'd be done. So let me, let me, before, let, let's talk about Snoop Dogg, okay? I think I can maybe address that. I'm looking for my article on it. So hang on. I may not even have it pulled up. I might have lost my article about it. I think I did, but uh, some of you out there already have seen that. Brock, you have the picture. Put it on the screen. Check this out, guys. What's going on here? What? Snoop Dogg, what are you doing, dude? No, that's the, there it is. That's his brand new album, Make America Crypt Again, with a corpse of the President of the United States with a toe tag that says Trump. This is Snoop Dogg's new CD. 
It is definitely anti-Trump, but it's anti. Think about this. I mean, Snoop, seriously, dude, look, wait a minute. You're promoting violence. You're promoting gang violence, promoting the Crips and Bloods. You're promoting gun violence. You're promoting assassination of a president. You're promoting rebellion. You're, you're promoting uh, uh, treason. You're promoting rioting. You're promoting racism. Are you serious? Is anybody going to call this dude out on this? Am I going to be the only one that calls this dude out? And I'm just some little preacher in the cornfields of Indiana. Snoop Dogg, what are you doing? And I don't even have to listen to the lyrics, the poison. Now, okay, you got some young gangbanger riding around in his low ride with a Glock 9 at his side, cruising around in the urban neighborhoods across America. Or you got some white dude in Appalachia listening to the bebopping and all of the uh, 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 rapping of the Snoop Dogg and trash talking, okay, with a rebel flag in the back of the truck with a shotgun behind his head on the rack who's driving around making meth somewhere in the backwoods. Or maybe you got some young African-American kid who's been selling heroin on the street, who's running with a gang, listening to this in the boombox, listening to Snoop Dogg, preaching his message of hate and hatred and murder and rebellion and disrespect. No wonder nobody stands for the flag. Look what they're doing. The president of the United States with the tag on the toe and he's dead and you got Snoop Dogg staring down on the corpse of the president saying, make America crypt again. You, you, are you serious? Has this guy lost his mind? How are we going to just sit here? Is this okay? Will Jimmy Kimmel do anything about it on late night? Will we hear from the great wisdom of Jimmy Kimmel? Will Bill Mars condemn the man? Will, will, will uh, what's his name? Michael Moore. Get a haircut and actually talk about this. Will we hear Rachel Maddow? Will she do a whole half a show on this? Will, will uh, Chris Matthews lose more of his hair over this? Will anybody, will Wolf Blitzer go to the Situation Room over this? And I want to ask a question. And God, this is why I need Christians praying, God forbid that the president wind up on a gurney Gunned down in cold blood. And if it happened to him, would any of these people take accountability? Would Snoop Dogg take accountability? Would Rosie O'Donnell take accountability? Would Ellen Degenerate take accountability? Would those people who put on the Shakespeare play feel any remorse? Will Kathy Griffin... Say, I wish I hadn't went there. Will Nancy Pelosi shed a tear? Folks, this is ridiculous. Have we lost our minds? Have we lost our minds? It's not just a bad hair day either for you, Nancy. It's a such, I'm asking a serious question here. What about Chuck Schumer? Snoop Dogg. This is not about racism. This is not about Democrats and Republicans. This is about the new world order and the rest of you. This is about the global elitist pushing hate, pushing division, pushing criminal activity, they are basically saying they are justifying assassinating the president of the United States. Could you imagine if Brad Paisley came out with a country music CD with Barack Barry Obama's laying there on a gurney with a toe tag? 
and a rebel flag over top of his dead corpse. Could you imagine if it was Toby Keith? Could you imagine if Jason Aldean had done that? Do you know the outcry that went went across this country? I don't understand what's happened here. Where have we lost our minds? Why is it okay? And this is not about race. This is not about ethnic background. This is not about religion. This is about good and evil. This is about right and wrong. This is about wickedness. We've lost our minds. And it's okay, I guess. Everybody thinks it's okay. It's not okay. I'm glad I've got a great audience of people who understand this. Now, he already had done a YouTube video. I mean, I mean, he had already done a music video shooting a, a clown that looked like the president, remember? With a fake gun that went bang in the head. He had already done one of those and, and uh, refused to, to apologize for that, but said maybe he should take another look at his musical uh, lyrics. And then he comes out with this, Make America Crypt Again. So I really feel bad for the Trumps. I feel, I feel bad for little Baron, who has to watch television and see his daddy's being, head being held up thinking it was really, it really happened, or now going to the local music store and seeing a picture of his dad's corpse laying on the gurney, or maybe turning on the radio and hearing songs about hating on his dad or whatever. I mean, I, I really do feel sorry for the Trump family in a way. And, and, um, you know, I have, thank you, Sylvia. Sylvia says, preach it, Pastor Paul. Thank you. I needed that. I really needed to see an encouragement on that because I think I'm going where probably hardly very few people will, are willing to even go. I doubt this will be preached on Sunday morning anywhere. Very, very few if it is. And in some cases it might even be encouraged, but I know they'll talk about this in college campuses and they'll encourage it. I guarantee you there's not going to be any rioting at UC Berkeley over this album. If Snoop Dogg decided he wanted to go to UC Berkeley to speak, do you think they would riot and break windows and tear things apart because Snoop Dogg was coming after this album's release? No. He could go to, he could probably go to any major university in this country and have 20,000 people show up for his concert. This guy's about ready to make hundreds of millions of dollars off this album. This will be his greatest selling album of all time. He does not care if gangbangers across America start gunning people down while they're listening to his music. He does not care if uh, kids in, in the backwoods of Appalachia justify a rebellious attitude of murder while listening to this filth and garbage. He will not care. It will not matter to him. Trust me. He does not care about the youth of America. Any man that would make an album with that on the cover does not care about the youth of America. This is the hypocrisy of Hollywood. This is the, think about it. Hollywood. Hypocrites. The H stands for hypocrites. The O stands for oppressive. The L stands for liberals, the other L for liars. And we can go on and on and on. The corruption in the swamp is out of control. The madness in the media has lost its mind. The hypocrisy in Hollywood at an all-time high with Harvey Harvey Wood and the, the sexual predators that literally have run rampant in that industry. And I get yelled at for selling a coffee cup. I've got people, there's 250 videos right now. I I found it out last night. 250, 250 different individual YouTube videos portraying me as a horrendous villain, a, a, a false prophet, a liar, a deceiver, a con man, a charlatan, I don't know, a gazillion things. And, and because they don't like my coffee cup or, or they're upset because we give an altar call. Fake salvations is one of them. 
or they don't like, you know, they don't like the salvation station. This, this, I'm telling you, and guess what? Of the 250 videos that literally, uh, they tie me to the CERN. They say I'm part of the worship of CERN. I've, I've seen it all. I've, they've said everything you can say about an individual. And that don't even bother me. It doesn't even bother me. It really doesn't. I'm just stunned. I looked, I said, is this the, and then I said, oh Lord, how many of these people profess to be Christians? And it's 240 of the 250 profess Christianity. You don't think the Lord isn't coming back? These are the scoffers. These are the mockers. These are the hackers and the zackers and the rest of the crackers and, and fighters who hate on us. I don't mean crackers in a, in a racial way. It just, it just rhymes. I could have said slackers or whackers or hackers and zackers and it's, it's unbelievable. It's incredible. This is the hate. And so when I say we're living in a day of hate, <laughs> someone's laughing crackers. It was funny. You actually put crackers in your chili. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wasn't talking about the term crackers that people use as a racial term, which is, is really sad that people use that term. But all of this hatred is really starting to get bad. And, and, uh, and I feel sometimes I, sometimes I sit back and think about it and I say, wow, if the church is eating its own that bad, if there's, but I know that these people who make these are not really Christians. I mean, I'm not going to judge them, but basically you couldn't make this stuff. You couldn't say the things. Like one dude's got in a video that says, I'm leading people to the Antichrist. I mean, come on. I preach against the Antichrist more than anybody. I got books about the Antichrist. I'm the last guy leading anybody to the Antichrist. Okay. I got, there's one guy who's got a video out that says that me and Mike from around the world literally worship the CERN. Unbelievable. Um, CERN? Are you serious? Aren't you concerned about CERN? What have we learned? Um, so I've thought back, I've sat back and I've thought this all the way through. And the reason I'm bringing this up today, cause I normally bring, I never bring it up. And I won't bring it up no more. Only reason I'm bringing it up today is because the Snoop Dogg video, the Snoop Dogg album, it's not okay to do what they just did. It's not okay. Snoop Dogg. I'm not going to give you a free pass and say, well, that's just the way it is. No, I'm not going to let you do it. And I'm neither. Am I going to say it's, it's not okay. Those 250 hate videos about me, flat out lies distorting me, trashing me, calling me a Jesuit priest and all kinds of other garbage stuff that I can't even, I can't even keep up with it. Okay. It's just too much. It's not okay. I mean, it's all, it doesn't bother me, but it's not okay. It won't be okay in judgment. If you're truly wanting to be, do the work of God, if you truly say that you're a Christian and you really love Jesus Christ, you wouldn't do that to another pastor. Even if you don't like me, even if you don't agree with my message, even if you don't care for me, just like Donald Trump, even if you don't like him, even if you disagree with his way of being the president, even if you think he's overbearing with his Twitter account, or even though you think, you know, you don't like it, or you think he's a hypocrite, or you think you don't know what he's doing, it, that's okay. Let's say you have those thoughts in your brain. It's not okay to do what Snoop, Snoop Dogg did. It's not okay to do what Kathy uh, Griffin did. It's not okay to say the things that Rosie O'Donnell has said, it's not okay to, to hate in your heart. It's not okay to blow up the White House, Madonna. It's not all right, Ashley Judd. It's not okay, Rachel Maddow. It's just not right. It's not okay. And I think until somebody will stand up and say, it's just not, it's not okay anymore, it's not funny anymore. It's not even funny anymore. And I can say this. I can speak from experience that every tongue that rises against us will be condemned in judgment. Not because Paul Begley said that, but because the Bible says that. In Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me, he shall condemn in judgment. So I thought I would just throw that in with the Trump discussion because I don't want to just do a video about the hate that we get and the, and the death threats and all the other crazy stuff that we get. I let that all go. But since this Snoop Dogg thing came up with Trump, I thought this would be a good time to just address this within the body of Christ. 
And I'm glad that we've got, see, I know I'm preaching to the choir here. They're shouting, amen, preach it, hallelujah, tell them, pastor, amen. But I do, I say this with all due respect, I love everybody, even those who do that. I really do love you, and I feel sorry, and I wish there was some way I could reach out in a way that could say, look, I love you, and I would never do that to you, and I, and I would pray to God that God would open your eyes and show you that's not the Christian way to do it. Um, and so I hope that we can help somebody along the way. There has been one guy who has actually took down all of his hate videos that he attacked many Christians, including me. And he, and, and, uh, he attacked me brutally, and, but he attacked a lot of other people too. I never did say a word to this man. I've never said a word to this man, never even commented on his videos, never even made reference to him. But he, the Holy Spirit, he did this for a whole year, but the Holy Spirit convicted him and showed him that what he was doing was devastating to the body of Christ. It was costing people souls, costing people. There are people who aren't saved that would probably come to Jesus, but when they see all this, they say, you know what, what's the use? Why should I even consider Christ if that's... Or they'd say, wow, I, I kind of like Paul Begley, you know. I kind of liked him. Or I kind of like Stephen Bendenoon. I, I really thought he was pretty good. And then I saw this videos, man. I Googled them and I said, wow. So I just decided to back off. Or somebody sent you a, a private email or Facebook message or some something on Twitter. And you're like, wow, I didn't know. And so you just back off and you go into this cold position of, you know... Because the Holy Spirit is telling you, this ain't right, this ain't right. But this in your face coming from people who say they're Christians, okay? And they'll do it to me. They've done it to Stephen ben the Noon. They've done it to everyone and everyone, anyone and everyone that preaches the gospel. And so uh, we know this. And so what I like, I love it. Thank you. Someone says, we adore you, Paul. I know that. Thank you so much. I'm not, like I said, I'm preaching to the choir here. Live right now, I know I'm preaching to the choir and I know that this, vid this broadcast will be seen thousands of times in the next 24 hours. And I know my followers and those who truly love Jesus in their heart say, the pastor is telling the truth right now because we've seen it. We know it goes on and we, don't, we, we defend the pastor even at times. Some of you, you get upset and you defend me. Uh, and, and you know it's, what they're doing is wrong. But I love the fact that you folks don't entertain it. You know, you don't do the same. We don't go around doing the same. We don't do it. We might disagree with someone's opinion on something, but we don't go and character assassinate a brother or sister in the Lord. Because when you do that, we're tearing down the body of Christ. We don't do that. We just sit back, we pray, and we refrain. If we can't say something nice, as my mama always taught me, then don't say nothing at all. She taught me, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. These are the golden rules. These are the gospel of Christ. So we pray. So now back to Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg, you're a big boy. And I would say to you, you should really, oh, I know you've, you've, you're all in though. I know you've pushed all your chips in the middle of the table, but man, you want to rethink this. Because when, the, when they start gunning, when the gang bangers start shooting each other down, they're going to say, but, but Snoop Dogg said, we need to make America crypt again. Yeah, we need to go gangster on everybody. And when there's, when there's a funeral after funeral after funeral of young, young African-American males and young white boys laying in caskets because they thought it was big and bad and this is how you make this country great, I want to know, will you shed a tear? Will you actually attend a funeral? Will you consult a mother? See, I preached 16 funerals in one year. 16 in my little home county of People who died of overdoses, of shootings. Uh, I mean, they died of everything and you could imagine. 16 in one year. It was the worst year ever for funerals for me. And I had to stand there and explain to people and try to put consult mothers and three little kids sitting on the front row while mama's in jail and daddy's in the casket because mama shot daddy because daddy was brutal to the mama. And I had to, in a house, in a, in a packed out funeral home, try to explain to people that somehow God loves these kids and he's going to make something good come out of this. And there's all kinds of violence and drug overdoses and meth and heroin. And there's danger out there. That is, and the violence, the turf wars, the gang wars, that's not going to make America great again, Snoop Dogg. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to beg you, man to man, to reconsider this, this album and say, you know what, wait a minute. 
I'm going to take that down. I'm going to do something different. I'm going to do something. Why won't you be a role model and do something positive? You've got the name. Can you imagine if Snoop Dogg, if you did a, 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 an album positively trying to lift some of these kids out of this lifestyle they're in into something more positive? Can you imagine if you did that? Wow. Wow. But I, I'm afraid that you're, I hope not. I'm going to pray for you. I am going to pray for you. You will have a hard time sleeping at night on this one. The albums will sell by the millions, but you're going to have a hard time sleeping because you're, you're making it off the blood, the real blood of the youth, po poisoning their mind with this thought that a rebellion against the president of the United States would somehow make America crypt again. Some of you are watching right now that aren't saved. Satan wants to destroy your life. We had 16 of you yesterday on this live show wanting to get saved. We had 20 last night. And if you're out there and you're listening and you're watching, would you do this? Would you like to be saved? You could type right now in the chat room, I want to be saved. You could do it. Pastor, please pray for me. I see you, Macbeth, Mac Macbeth Gross. I'll pray for you. Are you saved? If you're not, let's type right in there. I want to be saved. If you are saved, just say, just, you just type, pray for me. I will. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask the moderators. We've got great moderators, and they're going to, they'll be getting the names for me, and I'll be over at the Paul Bagley Prophecy chat room, and I'll write down every name that wants to be saved. And we will pray, and Lord, you can come to I Jesus Christ today. If you're listening on radio, you can pray. I won't know who you are, but we got, but Jesus will. You I can pray, see past and all uh, this pain. it's time to get saved. My heart is overwhelmed. It might not be. I can't Let's make get saved, it okay? One more Let's get day. saved. Then I call upon your name. Just type, I want to be saved. My tears fall like rain. All my fears, they fade away. Just type, I want to be saved. You let me make it one more day. Uh, I can't hear you folks, but I'll tell you what, Brock, let me know. Just type, I want to be saved. I take the time to pray, all my fears, they fade away. Gail Cauldron, rededicating. God bless you, Gail. I can see we love you. I'm so glad day. that you want to pray. And uh, I know you've been saved before. I see Sion, Timmy is saying, is I repent, Lord. This is some tough stuff today. This is some real, real I tough stuff today. Brand new song. This is one that's kind of messed up. Sharon says, I'm repenting. King Ovic is rededicating over a periscope. God bless you, King Ovic. The car, Karsh, the Karsh car wants to be saved. Praise God. Karsh car wants now to be I'm saved. At Scott, road. Scott wants to be saved. God bless you, Scott. I'm not sure uh, Stephen Longley wants to be saved. God bless you, Stephen. Praise God. To the left Gail to Cauldron is rededicated. Right. Amen. Addie wants to be saved. A-D-I-E. -E. God bless you, Addie. In Jesus' name. You're making the right decision. Stephen Longley, yes, we got but him. I know Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, love and obey. Praise God. When I'm not sure Praise the Lord. Stephen Longley, yes. Antonia Pretashi. Did I call him on your name? Antonia Pretashi wants to be saved. Praise God. Lynn wants to be saved. Day. Praise the Lord. Lynn Wilkerson. I can make it one more day. 
two Wyoming cowboys want to get saved over there at that Bible study. Well, praise when God, they must do a Wednesday Bible study. Two cowboys in Wyoming it's over at that Bible study. Good job, Andrea. All my fears, they fade uh, Wynn Wilkerson wants to be saved. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Lynn Wilkerson. Lynn Wilkerson. Okay. All my Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many others want to be saved? How many more? Time's running out. You can see the madness. This world can't last. I don't see. I'm not worried about a pope that's coming in the year 2068. I can tell you that. I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't know when the Lord's going to end. Time's going to end, but I just don't see 51 more years. We could. Be. I just don't see. I, I'm telling you, the Lord's coming back. How many more want to be saved? How many more want to be saved? Just type, I want to be saved. I can make it one more day. Yes, Snoop Dogg could be the next Nicky Cruz. He could be a great, great evangelist. Wayfaring Stranger. We're going to play another song. You want, Sharon, are you saying they want to be saved or this is who you want prayer for? Your, your grown kids, Jimmy, Jessica, and Carlos, and Carlos Jr. You got Scott, amen. Pray for Snoop, that's right. That's what I'm wanting you to do. I want you to pray for him. But I have to also let him know that he's affecting thousands. And there's a lot of blood going to flow down a lot of streets if he goes forward with this project. Far away. He needs to understand the, the ramifications of those type of actions. He's got to get, he's got to stop that. He's got to turn this thing around. It's like Kathy Griffin. She's got to repent and turn this thing around. We can't have this kind of stuff. It's just not right. It just won't work. And I love it's disrespectful. It brings destruction upon the land. The Bible says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Do you want to be saved? Just type, I want to be saved. The car, the Karsh car wants to be saved. Scott wants to be saved. Stephen Longley wants to be saved. Addie wants to be saved. Antonia Pritashi wants to be saved. The two Wyoming cowboys want to be saved. Lynn, Wilker, Lynn Wilkerson wants to be saved. Change it someday. It's Addie Mack. Thank you. Oh, cowboy man. Tom. Is he one of the two Wyoming Cowboys or is he just another cowboy? Cross. So despised by How many others want to come to Jesus? Has a wondrous okay, it's, uh, that's three of them. Okay, there's the two Wyoming Cowboys and then we got Cowboy Tom. Wants to be saved. Praise God. The dear we also got Kael Fao. Fao. Kalo Fao. F A O. Wants to be saved. Praise God. There's others. There's more. There's more. There's more. Don't wait. There's people on the fence, folks. Pray just a moment. There's people on the fence. Pray for the youth. Pray for America. Pray, pray that we, we are united and not divided like this. Pray that we can pull this thing together, all of us. This is the moment, folks. This is the hour. People are rededicated. People are reaffirming their faith. Some are repenting. We're going to pray, folks. We want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have ten names right now. And I want to pray with you in Jesus' name. Right now. There's another one. Okay. And, 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 and Donna... And 
Andanana Pritashi is actually from Albania, live with us right now from Albania, wanting to be saved. Praise God, that is beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We had people at Periscope rededicating. Also, Kalo Keo is also from Albania. Praise God. And we got these cowboys in Wyoming getting saved. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be touched by the power of your hand. I'm repenting of my sins. And I'm calling upon the name of the Lord. Stephen wants to be saved. I'm asking Jesus Christ to set me free. I'm opening my heart to the Messiah. To the Lord of Lords. To Yeshua. The King of Kings. Jesus of Nazareth. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Come into my soul. And set me free. Wash me in your precious blood and cleanse me from all sin. Take away the pain and the sin and the shame and the hate and the bigotry and the, and the things that are tearing me, the anger and the wrath and the things that are destroying me. I don't want to be destroyed, nor do I want my family destroyed. I don't want to die without Christ in my life. I want to feel love in my heart for my fellow man. And I want to walk in that love and that blessing. So I renounce Lucifer. I reject the spirit of darkness. I call on the name of Jesus to save me from my sins. Because I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I receive. Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that Jesus, the Messiah, Yeshua, rose from the dead. I believe he ascended into heaven. And I believe he's coming back. And I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith. In God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus' precious name. Saved in the name of the Lord. Saved in Jesus' name precious name. Somebody shout in this place. I saw a black man with a Bible and a sparkler in his hand. He was holding a tent revival and running a fireworks stand. He said the end of the world is coming, so you better get on your knees. Today bottle rockets two for one, salvation free. He said I quit my job at a big church where the milk and honey flow. To sell cherry bombs for Jesus in a tent beside the road. I ain't in it for the money, most cars they pass on by. But I pay the rent on New Year's and the 4th of July. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Big Bang Theory, Big Bang Theory, Pentecostal, Pentecostal, Fire and Brimstone, Fire and Brimstone, Mission Temple Fireworks Stand. Fireworks are dangerous, they can blow up in your face You better read the instructions, light the fuse and get away These things are made in China, so it's easy to see Why a man who worships Buddha ain't got no guarantee Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Big Bang Theory, Big Bang Theory, Pentecostal, Pentecostal, Fire and Bread. Going up in smoke 
It's like taking twenty dollars, y'all, and watching it explode. When the trumpet sounds and the Lord comes back, I promise you one thing: I'll be a human bottle rocket, and I'll go out with a bang. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Big Bang Theory, Big Bang Theory, Pentecostal, Pentecostal, Fire and Brimstone, Fire and Brimstone, Mission Temple Fireworks. Uh, yes, oh yes, so glad for all you folks getting saved here today. I've got 11 names, people getting saved this afternoon. This is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Powerful program today. Apologizing that we lost power there on all the networks for 10 minutes, but we got it back and we were able to stay live the whole time on the new radio line. Just so you'll know what that radio line is in case you're not home and you want to listen clear on your cell phones, well, just dial this number, 605-472-5791. That's 605-472-5791. You'll need the access code then, and the access code is 322-656-POUND. That's 322-656-POUND. All right, praise the Lord. I want to thank our moderators for just being so faithful uh, Love and Obey and Vicky down in uh, Florida, Robo Mom in California, Miss ZD in Illinois, and Michelle up there in New Hampshire. Thank you guys for being faithful. No doubt about that. Thank you so much. Also, I want to thank all of our prayer warriors. And Melissa does a great job pulling the prayer warriors together. If you ever want to be a prayer warrior, you can send her an email at mlisa73 at gmail.com. That's mlisa73 at gmail.com. And I want to encourage those of you who just got saved to be baptized, to find a pastor, to find a church, somewhere in the community where you live. Tell them you got saved and you want to be baptized. And if you don't know of a church to go to or, or a Messianic congregation, you can always send an email to Dr. Rosa and she'll help you find one. Dr. Rosa, the email address is this, converts.com. 2016 at gmail.com. That's converts.2016 at gmail.com. And if you need a Bible, I'll send you one for free. You can send an email to Miss ZD, and here's her email address. It's Miss ZD01 at hotmail.com. That's Miss ZD01 at hotmail.com. Or go to my website. And let me show you what you can do. Let's just do it. Brock, if you don't mind, we're going to go to the website. Uh, and we're just going to do a little uh, quick lesson. Some people want to know how to become a member. They want to know about how to find out about the Israel tour. Okay. All right, folks. So here, there you are. That's the show, of course, airs right here. So let me just show you that. Okay. There's the show that airs right there. Okay. And of course, it has a chat room right next door, and there's people in the chat room. But to find out if you'd like to become a member, scroll up here with me to where it says home at the top. Click there, that's the home button. That's gonna take you here to the home page. And if you wanna leave a prayer request, scroll down to where it says live show. You see that? Don't, don't click there, go to prayer wall. Click there, and when you do, Prayer wall shows up, and then you'll start seeing prayer requests. For instance, right now, uh, from, ye uh, from uh, yesterday, uh, please pray for my grandson, Nicholas. He is in the seventh grade. He's having trouble with math and history. I pray God will give his mom and dad wisdom in helping Nicholas. I pray that his teacher and counselors will suggest an ideal for Nicholas to pass math and history. Another prayer request, please agree with me in prayer for my daughter Liz to be healed of Lyme disease. Another prayer request, a friend in Atlanta, this was yesterday, Georgia, 
had a blood pressure of 213 over 106. He's recovering in the hospital. Please pray that he be strong and of good courage. Look at the next one on the Halloween. This one came in. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for giving me power over, the, over all the power of the enemy. I exercise that power over Satan. I bind you. I rebuke you. I render you powerless. Surgery. I bind the spirit of death that hovers over hospitals. I bind all bacteria and viral infections from entering Sister Heidi's body. I bind in excessive bleeding and complications and medical mistakes. I employ mighty angels to go now to prepare the atmosphere in the operating room, recovery room, the hospital room Sister Heidi will be in and assist the doctor and the nurses and all those who will have charge over Sister Heidi. I bind every evil soul tie from forming due to the medical staff instruments, cutting, and all medical procedures. I cover Sister Heidi with the blood of Jesus and commit Sister Heidi's body to your care. Until Sister Heidi is fully recovered, I speak a supernaturally quick recovery in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. That's just an example. So what happens is if you go there and you want to leave a prayer request, you go to the prayer wall and leave the request. That request gets reviewed and prayed over. And if some of the names and if some of the information that may be sensitive gets taken out and then it gets re-put, then the prayer request gets put on the prayer wall visible for everyone to see who, so that people can come there and pray over these, which is what we do every day. This is just one, this is a free ability for anyone to leave a prayer request and to know they will be prayed over on a daily basis. This is a powerful, powerful tool. We, we spend extra money in this uh, website, in the website design, so that this alone, that this feature alone could be put in for co- so that it could be kept confidential and, and be able to be reposted and made available for everyone to pray. This is why we are the Salvation Station. Now, Scroll back up with me. That's an example. Now go back up to the home page. So I'll click on the home. All right. There you see the home page. You click on the home and it will take you back to the main site. Let's uh, click right there on. I missed it, didn't I? Let me scroll back here. There it is. Click right there on the Israel tour. But let me show you what you'll see when you click there. It'll say Paul Begley Prophecy Downloads. And the first thing it says right there, the first line is Paul Begley Prophecy Membership. All right, you can click right there. It is a download and there it is. Copy of Paul Begley Prophecy Members. You can type your address, your name, your email address, your phone number, your personal testimony, your baptism information if you have that. Do you have any prayer requests for anyone that needs salvation? Do you have any other prayer requests for healing? financial blessings, any, any other special needs? Do you have any other comments? And then you submit it. This gets submitted to us here. We review your information, pray over the needs you have, and then we make you a brand new certificate of membership of which then I uh, sign personally and we mail it to you for free no matter where you are in the world and you become a member of Paul Begley Prophecy Online Church. You can then take that membership, put it in a frame, and put it on the wall. Let me give you another one real quick. Go to the next line as we'll go back there. You'll see that, uh, well, before I click on it, you'll see that there's also MP3 of the live shows. There's one on the third line. North Korea EMP attack against, uh, uh, attack new reports. The next one, uh, there was a show called Breaking. Russ Dizdar reveals genetically modified super soldiers for Armageddon. The next one, another show, Breaking. The Clinton Cabal, America on the Brink, Illuminati revealed. The next one, another show, Prophecy Alert, Gil Brazard. Planet X will cause martial law, doom of Nibiru. Okay, you get the picture. The next one, another, another show, Prophecy Alert, Vatican, war against the Pope. Those are... MP3 downloads that you can download. Some people will love to download those on their phones because they work at night. They're at different places. And so this way they download it on their phone 
And then when they're working or driving, they'd listen to the full show clear on their phone. Some people like that option. Go back to the same download page. I want to show you one more thing before we let you go. The first line was the free, is the free Paul Begley membership line. The second one is the Israeli tour. Click on there and all of a sudden, boom, here comes your download. Boom. You will get the entire brochure. Now I actually have this brochure in printed form in which if you request it, we can send it to you. Okay. All right. Um, uh, there it is. It's Israel's 70th year tour with Pastor Paul Begley and here the Watchmen. We're teaming up together. So Paul and Heidi are teaming up with the Watchmen on this powerful Israeli tour. It's going to take place. Uh, go back to the website there. It's going to take place October the 8th through the 18th. All right. October the 8th through the 18th. And you can the, I'm at the website. You can scroll down there. There you'll see it. October the 8th through the 18th, 2018. So it's October 8th through 18th, 2018. Uh, this will be an adventure of a lifetime. Israel's 70-year tour. And here's what we're going to do each day. We leave on October 8th. You'll arrive on October 9th in Tel Aviv. We'll stay in a deluxe hotel in Jerusalem that night. You'll enjoy a fantastic dinner and fellowship that night. The next day, we'll have a beautiful uh, breakfast. I mean, Israeli breakfasts are just amazing, really. The food, the culture, you're going to love it. Uh, we will then leave and go to the Temple Mount. The first thing we're going to do is the Temple Mount, in which uh, when we get there, that's where Solomon's Temple was. It's where the Dome of the Rock is now. Uh, we'll also visit the Wailing Wall. We'll visit the Pool of Bethesda. We'll go to Mount Zion. We'll go to the high priest Caiaphas' home where he held Jesus when Jesus was betrayed by Judas and he was kept down in the dungeon underneath there and was pulled up and was beaten by the Roman soldiers. You'll go to the actual underground dungeon where Christ was held. We will go to King David's tomb and on and on. We'll have lunch sometime during the day and we'll have dinner that night and I'll be speaking to you that night. I mean, then it just goes on, folks. You're going to end up at the Golgotha. You're going to end up at the garden tomb and take communion with me together with Sister Heidi and I. You're going to be with us at the water baptism at the Jordan River. I'll baptize you in the Jordan River. You can ride in a boat ride. We're all going to ride the boats. Probably have a couple boats because we got enough people probably. We're looking for 75 to 100 people to come with us. You'll take the boat ride across the Sea of Galilee. And see the beauty of the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus walked on the water and where Peter caught all those fish when Jesus told him to, where Jesus calmed the troubled waters of the, of the water. I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable what you're going to do. You're going to go to the Dead Sea Scroll Museum and see the Dead Sea Scrolls. You're going to go to the Holocaust Museum. You're going to go to the Mount of Olives and see the beautiful, uh, picture, uh, just look at the Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. You're going to go the, walk through the Garden of Gethsemane, go into the church of all nations with the rock of agony where Christ prayed and his sweat became his great drops of blood. You're going to go to the, the, the uh, chapel that's where Mary's tomb is at. You're going to go and visit all over. We'll be all over, okay? The dung gate where Christ always entered into the city. It goes on and on and on. What a tour. This is a tailor-made tour where Sister Heidi and I actually sat down. After I've been to Israel seven times, she has four. We actually, of all the things we've seen, we and, and we also want to leave. We're going to go at a slower pace to allow some of the ladies love to shop a little at some of the gift shops and places. And some of the tours that are out there, they're so fast and so hard charging that they don't give time for the ladies to shop and to rest and have a cup of coffee and just kind of take our time. They go a little too fast. They try to see too many sites in too quick of a pace. And we don't want to do that. We want to slow it down a little bit and, and make sure we hit the highlights, hit the best spots and take our time, eat the best meals. You have a great breakfast, a great lunch at a different restaurant during the day, and a great dinner at the hotel at night. I'll be speaking. There, then there's a 30-minute uh, where I'll speak in the evenings, uh, a little bit of a, a, a fellowship. One night, uh, uh, 
uh, what's his name? The Messianic uh, rabbi. What's his name? Uh, hang on. Par, uh, Zapara, what's his name? Oh, forgive me. I forget his name. I, I know his name. I know I, Rabbi yeah, Zerv Parat. Messianic Rabbi Zerv Parat. He spoke at the uh, Boise, Idaho. He spoke. I, I, I was sitting on the front row. He brought a powerful message. He's a Messianic Jew. Get this. He was a member of the Sanhedrin court and he got born again. Matter of fact, Carl Gallup's even wrote a book called The Rabbi That Found the Messiah. And his name is Zeb Parat. And he will be speaking one night for us after dinner. And we're trying, we haven't got this, so shh, we're trying to get Rabbi Yehuda Glick to speak one night if it's possible, all right? And we're also gonna see if Rabbi Stephen Ben Danun, another Messianic rabbi, would he speak one night, okay? And of course, I'll be speaking all the rest of the night. So we, we don't know. We just know for sure we got Zeb Parat. That one's confirmed. We'll let you know if we get the others. We may, we may not. We'll see. I think Stephen Benenun, though, is a pretty good, pretty good uh, chance we'll have him. Okay? And it's possible that Yehuda Glick would also speak. And that would be really cool. He's a member of the Knesset. He can give you a pers political perspective of Jerusalem and how happy he is that Americans come. And you don't have to be an American either to come. You can come from anywhere around the world. This will be a great, great tour. Now, you'll need to call this phone number, and I'm going to give you the phone number right here. Uh, if you look on my website here, I have it pulled up for you. Uh, the message from your host, that's me. Dear friends, my wife Heidi and I are so looking forward to joining you and the Hear the Watchman family for... Israel's historic 70th year tour. <laughs> Folks, it's more than historic. It's biblical. Jesus said, this generation shall not pass away until all these things are fulfilled. So let me, let me finish reading, Brock. Let me finish reading. Okay. So anyway, my wife Heidi and I are so looking forward to joining you and here the Watchman family for Israel's historic 70th year tour. This all exclusive first class experience is custom designed. And limited to just a small exclusive group. We're looking at 75 to 100. No more. And you'll enjoy several special evening guest presenters, including myself, Messianic Rabbi Zeb Parat. This is truly a dream of a lifetime trip, an opportunity you won't want to miss. Blessings in Yeshua's name, Pastor Paul Begley. The price, $4,399.00. That is including airfare from New York to Israel, hotel every night, first class, three wonderful meals a day, all of the bus ride to all of the different locations, a professional tour guide who will be traveling in, in the buses with us, and you, myself and Sister Heidi uh, along with you every step of the way. Also, Jeannie Moore from here, The Watchman. You will enjoy this, folks. The number of the call is right there, 1-800-929-4684. That's 1-800-929-4684. Once again, 1-800-929-4684, option two. So when you dial, you'll push option two. Once again, 1-800-929-4684, option two. When you get on the phone with the person, tell them, I want to go to Israel with Pastor Paul Begley, October the 8th through the 18th. I want to go with Pastor Paul Begley to Israel. This will be a trip of a lifetime. I guarantee it. And I wanted to share that with you. Check it out. It's at our website. I also wanted to show you how you can find stuff on the website, how easy they have set it up to be. And I want to thank Mike Childers for doing a great job in maintaining the website and also uh, Miss ZD as well, as they do a great job in maintaining and keeping the information flowing for you, all right? Because we're truly living in the last days. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. I'm so glad people got saved. And oh, one last thing, the School of Prophecy. Uh, the School of Prophecy, uh, if I can uh, quickly go over here. Uh, let's just go to the website also, if you would, okay? Go with me, Brock, and you'll see there's the home page. There's the home page. Now at the top, you'll see where it says store. So just click over there because this will take you to the uh, information. It's right up there at the top. 
to the right store. You click on it and all of a sudden it takes you to the store, but I want you to scroll down past the products to the School of Prophecy. You'll see over on the right where it says School of Prophecy 2017 semester. Go past that and look at where it says School of Prophecy 2018 spring semester. Matter of fact, go down there. There it is in blue. 2018 spring. The first, uh, there you see it in blue. School of Prophecy 2018 spring semester. Down at the bottom, down there in blue. Uh, you'll see the first one is your required textbook. The textbooks are $60 for the class. And then you'll see the sign up for the tuition. The tuition, of course, the class is $500 for the semester. You, you can simply click there and make a $100 donation. That's not a donation, actually. This is your tuition. You click on there and uh, get yourself registered. Put a, put $100 down or $200 down and get registered, and then you can take time to pay for it. The class starts the first week in February. You got to get your tuition paid and ready by January 15th. We'll work with you. Go there now. Get ready. We've already got two people signed up already to, for, for the spring. We have 57 sign up for the first semester. Two people have already signed up for the spring. You might say, Pastor, I missed the first semester. What do I do? Start in the second. You can, you, you, it doesn't matter when you start. You can, cause there's going to be a third semester coming up. It'll be in the summer. But each time you sign up, you'll start with the first class, hearing from God. And then you'll take the next semester, be your second class. And by the time you get to the third semester, it's the Paul Begley prophecy. It's my textbook that's being right now compiled and, and put together. And it will be that third class will be a full prophecy class, the whole semester, and in which I'll be teaching it along with Dr. Carter and Dr. Wolverton. And so you'll want to be definitely there for that third semester. And then you'll get prophecy from then on. There will always be a prophecy class along with a regular biblical class each semester after that going together. But the price is still always the same, $500 per semester, okay? And then your textbooks may vary a little, but right now they're at 60, okay? And so this is a great, the people that are in the first semester are loving it. We're getting unbelievable. And you should hear the testimonies. People are actually getting words from the Lord. They have never, the, we teach you how to hear from God, the tools you'll need, how to do that, and, 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 and how the Lord blesses in your prayer life and the biblical study you do will definitely help you enhance your faith and, and also, our school will be accredited school. We've applied for accreditation. It takes three years to get accreditation. And we're using accredited textbook material that's been approved so that your uh, credits are transferable with most uh, Christian uh, colleges. Uh, it's up to the college to accept people. We are going to, of course, work with anybody and everybody that's out there that's accredited. So certainly... You can enhance your degrees, okay? Um, but some of you just want to get the word. You just want it. So I want to encourage you. I wanted to just take a little bit of time today and just share with you our website where all the information is, okay? All right. God bless all of you. I'll see you guys tonight. Prime Time Live at 10 o'clock p.m. 10 p.m. Eastern on Prime Time Live, 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 live. I have a brand new DVD entitled The Total Eclipse of the Sun. I mean, we have these great solar eclipses, the constellations in the heavens of Revelation 12, and many other signs that God gives in the last days. I have this DVD available at my website only. It's a powerful presentation of the coming of Jesus Christ and everything you need to know about his return. Get it now at my website. A brand new DVD, Rapture Ready. Finally, we're going to answer the question. Millions of people want to know, what is the rapture? When is the rapture? And am I ready for the rapture? Well, this brand new DVD is filled with information, scripture, a PowerPoint presentation that will help you prepare to be rapture ready. We're living in those days. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Get this DVD now at my website. 
available from Paul Begley, his CD Wayfaring Stranger. I'm just a poor wayfaring stranger traveling through this world be Wayfaring Stranger includes the title cut plus 11 other songs. No Order yours by visiting paulbegleyprophecy.com today. Thank you so much for watching the broadcast. I really appreciate it. And I'll tell you something. If you'd like to know more about some of our books that we've written, go to our website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I've even got music CDs. I actually have a couple country gospel music CDs that we recorded that I think you'll really enjoy. I have five books that I've written. This is my newest one, Jerusalem Jihad. Jerusalem Jihad. This has to do about an end time apocalyptic scenario that includes the rebuilding of the temple, also uh, the two witnesses, and uh, it's a powerful presentation, if you will, on how things are starting to come together here in the last days. So again, check out all of our books, uh, CDs, and everything else we have, and your donations are greatly appreciated at our website. God bless you, in Jesus' name. Folks, let me tell you something. I have a book I really recommend you should get. You go to my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I have a book entitled The Zombie Apocalypse. Now it has to do with actual, 35 actual accounts of demonic possession and manifestations that uh, is very troubling but will help you understand how demon spirits actually work in these last days. I highly recommend you get it also for your teens and college students to help explain to them the pitfalls to not fall into these uh, sorcery or witchcraft, seances, Ouija boards, or some video games that could alter the mind and the soul of your child. Again, this book, it's only at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. There you'll find it on the products page. It'll be a blessing to you, insightful, and you'll bless the ministry. A brand new DVD, Zombie Apocalypse 2. I sat down with L.A. Marzulli and got a first-hand account from Pastor Casper McLeod. This DVD deals with the demonic spirits manifesting in the world today. The zombie craze has certainly caught the eye of Hollywood and movies and TV series. But do you really know what it is? Get the DVD. It's at my website right now.